In this tutorial, I show you how to create a cool 3D shadow in Illustrator. And do me a favor, when you're done, I would love you to email me what you create at contact at graphicsgirl.com. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Even learning a few shortcuts will save you so much time and make you look so much more professional. Just click the link below. Hello creative! It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. You can see I already have a colored background in my file to really make these letters pop. To do that, you would come to your shape tool here, creating a rectangle and filling it with a color. What I've also done is put it on its own background layer and locked it down. You can tell that I've locked it down because I've gotten the no edit icon there, which means you'd have to click on the lock to make it editable. Now I no longer have that no edit icon, but rather an I-beam. I'm going to keep it locked down there. So you'll want to create a new layer with your new layer icon or options menu, new layer. And let's double click that and call it the text. All right, so make sure you're in that layer to begin. Go ahead and put away my layers palette there. And I'm going to select my type or text tool. T on your keyboard. So I'm going to click down to the new version of Illustrator here puts in lorem ipsum text, and I'm going to type out the word blend. Choosing my selection tool at the top, I'm going to just move it into place. So this font that I'm using here is called 4th Ultra. I got the font called 4th Ultra at myfonts.com. You can see that you could click on scripts or just look for rounded sans serif type fonts. You can learn more about my fonts if you come to graphicsgirl.com slash my fonts, where I actually give away some free fonts and review myfonts.com with my video here. I'm using a font called 4th Ultra, and I have it set fairly high at 300 point, but that's basically because I have a large file. You'll modulate based on the size of your file, but what you'll want to have is some space down and to the left for that amazing shadow. So now that you have some copy, let's make it white. And now let's copy the copy with Commander Control C. Okay, next I'm gonna lock this down with Commander Control 2. So you can find this under Object Lock. All right, so now when you click on it, you cannot select it. And recall, in our layers panel, my background is locked down. So there's a little bit of a difference between having layers that are locked and having objects locked. In that you can see in my actual layers panel, my layer is not locked. However, the selection is. And because I copied it, now I can paste it. But instead of just pasting it, which is Commander Control V, I want you to paste in back, which is Commander Control B as in boy. And now you can see it's editable again. See if I use shift down arrow, shift left arrow, you can see that I in fact have that original one that I copied. I think I copied it when it was black. If yours is looking white, we're gonna change our color anyway. So let's go ahead and make it orange. So now I have white and then orange copy. The white is not selectable, only the orange is. And now I'll make another copy, but this time I'm gonna do it by a different method by holding the Alt or Option key down and dragging. I'll go ahead and make it a different color, this time maybe lime green. You can see here that because I didn't paste it in back, it is actually in front of the orange copy. So you can change the order by arranging it back with the shortcut Command or Control Shift Left Bracket or Object Arrange Send to Back right here. We have our white that's locked down, our orange and our green. And if you don't know which one you're on, you can always look at the fill color. You're right here, 
I mean my green one, right? If I'm having difficulty selecting a different one, you just might want to choose a different area of it from which to drag. So with our white one locked down, there's no way that you'll accidentally select it instead of the orange. When you come to the outside now, drag and roll over both. You can see that I have them both selected. So it's these points that I want to focus in on. Our final step is to use the blend tool. So the blend tool is right here. If you double click the blend tool, you'll get the blend options dialog box and it will ask you, would you like to smooth the color, specify how many steps between the two or specify a distance. So I'm going to choose specified steps from the drop down, and for mine, I'm going to give it a fairly high number, such as 30. Go ahead and click OK. Now we haven't yet applied our blend. We just set the blend settings. And here's where the magic comes in. You're going to click on the first point, and then click on the second. Voila! There is your blend. You can see as I hit shift in my downward arrow that I can extend it beyond. I'm, gonna, I'm now going to click off so you can really see our handiwork. And when you click on one, now they move together. Here, if you wanted to modify one, such as the orange versus the green, you can still do that by coming to the direct selection tool or white arrow in your toolbar. And here now when you click off to deselect and come back in, you can move just one of these. Here I'm moving just the orange. And now the green can also be extended. Pretty cool, right? So you might notice some pixelation here. It's only because you might want to modify how many steps. More steps equals a smoother blend. So with it selected, you can also come back into the menu under Object, Blend. And here you could see the blend options. You could release the blend or reverse the front to back colors. So if I come back under my blend options, so here instead of 30, I could make it 130 and it's getting a lot smoother and it's still editable and that I can move the orange. So that's how you can use the blend tool in Illustrator to create a cool 3D shadow. And so now it's your turn. I'd love to see how you use this effect. If you want to email me your artwork at contact at graphicsgirl.com. You can do this. Okay. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, Okay. share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with P-H and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.